course, you hear that of Dan O'Sullivan, the great hall ring announcer going around introducing every single bout of the day and calling all of the results. So, Jester yesterday has got his pedometer on. It's on 35,000 steps in the last day and a half. So, and hasn't stopped moving, doing a great job indeed. This bout in front of us, on the female A-class category. Stacey Copeland from Brabber in Stockport in the red corner. Christina Ines from Grimstad in Norway in the blue corner. So another international competitor. Copeland is an elite boxer. Won a, won a silver medal at the European Championships. He trains with the GB squad. The problem for her is really that she is a 69 kilo boxer, a welterweight, and that is not an Olympic weight category. The Olympic weight category is a middleweight. And you know, just as a natural welterweight, to make a step up to middleweight. So she's caught, caught out there, but represented Britain. The, uh, at the most recent Women's World Championships. I think really that is why it is so important that they do seriously consider adding a number of extra weight divisions in the women's category at the Olympic Games. It's hard though because to include women's boxing at the at London 2012, which of course had to happen, uh, a number of men's entries were, were reduced, and that's why we've seen a reshuffle in the men's weight divisions. So, really, what, what you want for boxing is more places available for boxing at the well, what the next level is, I said, it's time about the 2020 and then more women's divisions. Some 18 days of competition at London 2012, by the time Anthony Joshua boxed in the final bout of the competition in the Super Heavyweight final, the 272nd bout, so gives you an idea of just the sort of task that they have in terms of organisation, in terms of numbers of competitors, so maybe we will see it expand. And the first round goes between Copeland and Ines. Why Copeland's nickname is Spongebob? I do not know. Any guesses? Well, he doesn't like SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Good point, yeah. Patrick the Starfish? It's probably not, you know, in a sport where nicknames are, you know, the Executioner or the Dark Destroyer, it's not going to instill terror in your opponent. Not like Dark. ghastly murder tattoos, anyway. <laughs> no. So the second of four rounds, and the bell goes, and the boxes meet in the centre of the ring. You know, it's nice and tight, high guard. Just feeling out that jab. Copeland tries to come over the top with a one-two. And it's tentative with that jab. Copeland quick to pull the trigger with that counter right hand. Just inching her way back, trying to bring Ines onto some shots. Fainting with the feet there. Push her opposite. Competitor back. Really nice composure from Copeland, taking her time. is perhaps a product of the fact she is training with some really high level opposition up in the IS in Sheffield. Just a real measure of composure about her work. She looks for the opening. Nice counter right hand again over that jab of Ines's.
obviously now just making it so a little bit tentative with the left hand as she throws it, just quite committing and then moving out of range quickly. And she does throw it and a nice right hand on the bell, just sends it onto the ropes. And oh, the Norwegian competitor looks exhausted in the corner after the second round. Just looks a bit unsettled there. Copeland was just having the last word in those exchanges you know, when they were trading up close it was Copeland who'd finish with the big shot at the end just to you know, leave that impression with the judges and they'll say trying to be first and last in every exchange Christina Rinas there trying to get her breath back and nice calm corner work and typically Norwegian there very calm demeanor in the corner and that's just what you need when you're under a little bit of heavy fire isn't it I'm not sure I'd like having a towel flapped around in my, in my face. Do you prefer a hand fan, John? <laughs> quite high, you'd be quite a high maintenance boxer, yeah, wouldn't I, you? Know, yeah, I, I would insist upon a hand fan. A nice cooling breeze, but without, without anything getting in my cheek. Green tea and a hand fan for John Dennant. Do the hand fan now, actually. So third round, Stacey Copeland and Christina Ines. Copeland patient, waiting. Not a great deal of head movement from it. She's comfortable with the distance and range. Knows where she can hit and not be hit from. Again, nice combination, working behind that jab the jab into the body and she's made in as tentative with her shots and I think the power has been felt early on she doesn't waste much Copeland you know when she throws a shot she puts you know she puts something into everyone so the jabs are landing firmly and say economical style from Copeland, she's put Innes under sustained pressure, pushes her, presses her back onto the ropes, lands a nice short uppercut on the inside. And referee having a word with her. And Innes is, uh, at the moment, John looks to be struggling to cope with the power and the measured aggression that she's got in front of her from Stacey Copeland. Copeland's really grinding forward, turning up, turning up the pressure another notch. And we'll see in the next minute or so just how durable Ines is as she receives a standing eight count there, and I think rightly so. That's a good combination. Cast hooks to the body, looking again to the head. A deep breath from Copeland, she's ready to go again. Yeah. Oh, good finish to that round from. Stacey Copeland, she's in cruise control because she's putting a lot into this contest, but looks in control of her actions and in control of her competitor. A standing eight count will do her a lot of favours going into the fourth and final round. Fourth round begins. Again, in as tentative as that right hand over the top lands for the umpteenth time for Christina Moore. Stacey Copeland, rather. In as leaning over her head there. And nice covering up from Copeland as she stepped into range.
Copeland just trying to faint, draw the lead from Ines. See why Ines is hesitant to punch because she's just been counting these heavy punches. Drilling back. Obviously plain evidence yet again in the second standing eight count. There's not a lot of protest from Ines there, so perhaps a worthwhile breather. The referee has waved her off, in fact, and well, she doesn't look very happy. She also didn't put up the sort of resistance that you'd expect, and I think the referees can see a lot more than us in his body language from where he was. He felt that there was no point continuing with that contest. Yeah, I think he felt that she was under pressure, shipping punches, really all that was going to happen in the time that was left was well, she would have taken a little bit more stick that she probably needed to, didn't need to have. So a merciful decision maybe, but not the wrong one. Stacey Copeland progresses very nicely into the final. No problems at all for her. We interesting to see who meets her in the ring tomorrow afternoon. We'll just wait for the uh, final announcement. Looking ahead then to the first youth bout of uh, the afternoon, 49 kilo category. Back to the boys, it's Connor Butler from Kirby, Stephanie Davis from Paul Green, three three-minute rounds there coming up in just a couple of minutes' time. And uh, referee waves Dan O'Sullivan over, a few more miles on the old pedometer, and he will announce Stacey Copeland as this year's finalist, the Haringey Box Cup in the women's A-class 69 kilo category. Do you think with professional boxing where it's more geared for knockouts, you would, you know, referees, professional referees do let things go a bit further. Out of boxing, you don't really need to. then it's fair enough for the referee to, to step in, even if there hasn't been that sort of conclusive knockdown punch. Yeah. 